Hey, and welcome to this very special edition of the Bowls of Life podcast. I'm Tyler. And I'm Virginia. Oh, as we come through life, we've learned something important. We learned that life is messy. There are a lot of armchair experts out there who will try to tell you how to make life simple. And even though I'm currently sitting in an armchair, it's not that simple, and you're not going to find that here. Instead, you'll find everyday people who have jumped into the mess of life and... Well, we're just going to make an adventure of it, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. So this is a special edition because this is technically a quarantine edition, Virginia. Yes. Yes. Why are we quarantined? Because somebody got COVID. Yes. Was it, was it me? No, it was, it was, it was me. It was you and you still have it. How, how does, uh, how do things smell right now, babe? Pretty bland. Pretty bland. How, how do they taste? Just as bland. <laughs> oh, that's wild. Um, Virginia has a super smeller. Uh, she likes to claim that I don't have a good s- sense of smell. It might be somewhat true, but I still argue that you have a super smeller. Um, but now it's broken. Yeah, like, you know, you always wonder what, what it would be like out there if you haven't had COVID yet. You're probably wondering what it would be like if you get COVID. And you let me just say, A, you can't predict it. I don't care if you think you have something that's going to cause you to have it worse or think you have something that's going to cause you to have it better. But um, you can't predict it. And another thing is I really miss my smell. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, That was like a big fear of mine. Like I couldn't predict what was going to happen if I got COVID. I finally got it. And, um, you know, a little fearful of what it could turn into. And thank the Lord it was mild for me, Um, not I can't say the same for other folks that were in the same exposure realm. Um, but yeah, I miss the smell. I was already fearful of that, and now I'm fearful of when it's going to come back. Yeah, because you mentioned you have a friend who had it, like, apparently back in April, you know, partially when this all started happening, and they still don't fully have their smell and taste back, right? Right. Yeah, that's she's ridiculous. she's a foodie like me, so... I'll cry with her. No. That, that, mm. So quarantine. So quarantine. And not only is it quarantine, but it is the beginning of the year, 2021. Yes, it is a new year. Um, 2020 has been kicked to the curb. Uh, I don't think that meant that all the problems went away. Mm -hmm. And if the first, you know, seven days have not proven that, you just haven't paid attention. Right. Um, Yeah. 2021 take two, you know, what else? Or 2020 <laughs> take two, I guess. And um, uh, just c- continued. <laughs> yes, continued. There you go. I like it. Um, well, hey, we want to play messy. a little game. Yes, it is messy. We know about those messy things. We're going to play a little game uh, brought to us courtesy of Pod Decks. Um, I have in my hand a deck of cards with all kinds of questions, specifically for podcasts. That's the name. Pod Decks. Uh, yes, Pod Decks. And so they're not a sponsor but hey if you guys ever hear this and you want to sponsor us you feel we'll free to it. absolutely yeah so no rapid fire questions but something else yes absolutely today. so this one is called what the heck so here we go babe what the Let, heck? let's see what the heck would you ever pick up a hitchhiker no why not because well a i'm a woman and we're vulnerable <laughs> weak no i'm just kidding um <laughs> i don't carry weapons with me <laughs> That's because true. I would never harm another human being. No. And, um, yeah, I just, I'd be afraid of what could happen. And Sure. Yeah. That's fair. That's fair. If you could bring one famous person back from the dead, who would you pick? Holy cow, that's a hard question. Because now I have to think about who all has died mm. that is famous. Yes. Um, hmm, hmm, hmm. You know, I think... This is a really difficult question, and I'm going to go with um, Alan Rickman. Oh, yes! I 100% knew you were going to go Alan Rickman. I almost told you to go Alan Rickman. Uh, Gosh, I I know you so well. I was trying to think through, Uh, like... Who are famous people that Virginia knows that she knows have died, and I went, oh, Alan Rickman. I'm not good with... um, Yep. Famous people in deaths and things like that. Yeah. So, Alan Rickman's a good one. There you go. Good old... Alan Rickman. What is the role you know him most for, babe? Snape. Snape. Severus Snape. 
Ron Weasley. Dumbledore. There you go. All right. <laughs> Do you have a signature move or a quirk that people notice or comment on? Oh, let's see. You're doing yours right now, touching your nose. Yeah, a little bit. It's because my beard touches it a lot. Or exactly. My your mustache tickles and you, yeah. you hit your nose. Yep. Um, I don't know. This might be a question for somebody else, but uh, I can't think of anything. A um, quirk. Yeah. Signature move, quirk, nothing you can think of that people notice or comment on. There was this one time. This one time. That... At the end of every prayer, I would say, A to the man. Mm. And I started in like 2016 when we were in Australia. And I was like, somebody's going to pick it up. I'm just going to keep saying it. Somebody's going to pick it up. And I would explain it sometimes when I would say it like A to the man. Like it's amen, but it's also like A to the man, God. <laughs> and uh, somebody, once, I, once we got settled here in Pearl... Somebody picked it up. I think, it, I think it was Kate. Uh, I could see that. Uh, I thought at least she like recognized it and, and noticed mm. it. And I was like, yep. Mm, there you go. So started something. Signature move. I like it. Have you ever had a this can't be <laughs> happening moment? And what was it? <laughs> nope. I'm going to take that as a yes, but you don't want to talk about it on podcast. Fair enough. Uh, we're going to keep moving. Uh, would you ever consider writing to someone in jail as a pen pal? Yeah. I, I think that'd be a cool thing. I, mean, I don't know what I would say. What'd you do? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't think that's... Did you really do it? And then it'd be like an odd man. Um, oh, man. What's his name? Odd man from Serial. Like, oh, he didn't actually do it. And now we got to get a podcast about it. Mm. Hey, that would give us a good mm. podcast. Maybe we get a following. But in a way, I, I think that's making a lot of people's situations too. So Yes. Um, Fair enough. Yeah. All right, last one for you. And I like this one. Is cereal soup? Why or why not? Well, I've never categorized cereal in that way. But if I were to define soup... I would say yes. Why? Because, um, well, soup is like a liquid meal that has chunks of things in it at, on occasion. So, yeah, it's just a sweet soup. There you go. All right. Well, that was what the heck. Let oh. me ask you questions. Oh, okay, sure. I'll answer okay. questions. All right. Have you ever licked a battery? I mean, probably, but I don't really remember. I can't, I can't yeah. say for sure. Well, does it shock you? It, a little bit. Okay. You have to do it. I think you have to do it with a 9 volt for it to actually shock you because it's got the positive and negative right there on top. Gotcha. All right. If you were a villain or a criminal mastermind, what would be your calling card? I would not have a calling card because I don't want to be able to be tracked in my crimes. That's just silly. Smart. I'm not a comic book villain. I'm a real villain. Alright. Which body part would you wish to detach? Like, if you could detach and why? Uh, 100% it's my arm. Um, because then I become a comic book hero. I'm arm fall off boy who would detach his arm and use it as a blunt instrument to fight uh, cr real villains. Okay. Yep. Has arm fall off boy. <clears throat> arm fall off boy. Okay. That was his name. He was not very popular. Okay. Has anyone started a rumor about you? If so, what was it about? Uh, I, I don't. I don't think so. Hmm. I don't know so. I mean, if maybe they rumored it to themselves and I didn't know about it. Right. Well, you should probably know what people are saying about you, Tyler. Yeah, that's okay. How fast can you say the alphabet? A B C D O G H I J K L M N O P Q R S T V W X Y Z. Pretty fast. Don't think anybody can do it faster. There's probably people who could, but that's okay. <laughs> All right. Well, we are rolling into the new year, so we thought we would take a brief pause from our session of talking through God's big picture, uh, right. the tracing the storyline of 
the Bible, mm -hmm. um, and kind of talk through the new year and things around the new year. So, new year same me or new year new me? That's a great question. Are you asking me? Yes, 100%. New well, year same me, new year new me. I think it's more twister. <laughs> I think it's more like new year um new intentions. New intentions. Ooh, good word usage. I well, like a good word. Can't take full credit for it. When I was talking to my friend today, we we're talking about new year stuff. That was the word she used. Okay. I actually have a phrase for it. Ooh, hit me with it. Set. I'm going to set the tone for my year. Set the tone for the year. I like that. Yeah. Um, so what do you mean when you say uh, intentions or setting the tone for the year? What's that What's that about? Well, okay, and we'll, we'll probably talk about this, but, you know, everybody, everybody has an opinion about New Year's resolutions, right? Absolutely. Like they either, and it, it's so strong sometimes, too. I'm like, whoa, chill. It's just a thing. But, um... Either hate them or you love them, like you want to do them, and or you're Pete the cat who was very confused about what a New Year's resolution was. That's true, Pete uh, the cat. Bless poor Pete heart. the cat. Even though he literally <laughs> didn't say a word the whole episode. Uh, actually, he said like one thing at the very end. I don't remember okay, what it I was. It. Yeah, yeah, it was, was just like, like one thing. Everybody talked except for him, and I was like, okay. I think they were narrating his story for him. Poor Pete. Yeah. Okay, everybody's speaking for him. So New Year's resolutions, um, you know, can be a sore spot for some people because they feel like, you know, I've set resolutions before and it never happens, or right. they think it's stupid because they know they won't fulfill the goal or the resolution that they set. Which sounds to me like you just set an unrealistic goal because it was a trendy thing or you thought it sounded cool when you told somebody what that was. Right. And then I think there's some people that, you know, they, they every year they set a goal and whether they meet it or not is, you know, irrelevant, but... Um, for as far as, like, s setting the tone for the year, I think it's less about, like, um, specific goals, which I think are very important because you're not going to reach your overarching goals. Um, you're not going to reach your, um, you know, well, overarching goals if you don't have specific goals set in place. Now, hmm. coming from somebody who lives in the health and wellness industry um, or works in the health and wellness industry, you know, that is so very true. You may have this, like, long ending goal um to do with your health but you're not going to reach it if you don't set small goals and small steps to get there that you work on daily monthly weekly or weekly monthly etc so with setting the tone i think it's more about just taking a moment and um reflecting on your past year now okay and let me just stop and say this is the first year i've ever done this yes i'm such a pro <laughs> So you're bringing all the years of wisdom and yes. experience to this game. I've never been a super resolution kind of person. Um, not It was never that really important to me. And then just as I've grown in my faith and grown in my relationship with you as my husband and my family. And like now we have a daughter. Um, I think it just it makes sense to just take some time. And what, what better time than at the beginning of the year... Um, not to say you should wait to the beginning of the year to do these things, right. but what better time than the beginning of a year, you know, and you can, um, heck, if you did it in July every year, that would be fine. It doesn't matter when you do it, but it's just about taking some time to reflect on your past and maybe, maybe it's a, a certain amount of time, a year, it could be a month, it could be whatever, but you take some time to reflect and maybe you look at like things that you enjoyed, things that you missed, things that you grieved, things that you um, want to improve or do differently. Um, and then that's where you kind of go, okay, well, what do I want this future set time, whether it's, again, a month, a year, whatever, to look like? Um, and I think I think it all, it all boils down to your motivation, too. Like, do you even want your life to improve or change or do you want it do you want to grow <laughs> or you just want to say the same so um i think that's just a great point to like to take some time to do those things and again it doesn't have to be the new year this just happens to be a really convenient time to do so yeah absolutely um one of the things i heard in there was you were basically saying you have to be intentional in what you're doing yeah i, I think it plays into um something i've said before is you'll never stumble into a stronger faith and I think I probably took that from our lead pastor yeah like you're, mm -hmm. you're never gonna just accidentally grow in your faith well you're never gonna accidentally grow in this area that you wish you were growing in unless you sit down and go 
okay, how am I actually going to do that? Like, you're not just going to accidentally get better at doing things. You're not yeah. going to abs- accidentally get better at habits in your life until you start, you know, intentionally doing little things along the way. Um, yeah, yeah I, I think, um, you know, we some of us have a tendency, and I'm speaking for myself here, have a tendency to, like, just sit back and let things happen and expect things to happen sometimes. Not in an entitled way, but just like a, you're not a go-getter. Um, and uh, know your personality, because if you're if you're that type of personality, then, then you have to realize, like, oh, I have to, like, step it up. Like, I have to uh, put these intentions in place because I'm not going to stumble into a stronger relationship with God if I don't put forth the effort. Yeah, 100%. Um, so, I, I think we've kind of said this a little bit, but goals and maybe New Year's resolutions aren't really the same thing. They can be, but they don't have to be. Maybe that's that's more of what I'm trying to get yeah, at. Yeah, I think they can be different, um, especially, yeah, especially, like, when you're looking at a whole year. Right. Like, for instance, if you look at the year ahead and you say, you know, I want to um, make five new friends... Okay, I want to make five new friends this year. Mm -hmm. Um, And so then all you're focused on is that number, and you're not actually focused on the personal growth. Like, the number can get you the personal growth, sure. But if you're, if it, maybe you make it, the specificity can help, you know, the number five. But if you look at your year and you go, I just want to grow my relationships. I want to grow my friendships. I want to bring more people into my life that are uplifting and et cetera. You know, we do life together. Then, um, to reach that, then you have to then put in the work week to week, month to month, and you have to then stop and then look at the, maybe just the month ahead and say, well, what are some things I can do? What are some events I can go to? What are some things, what are some places, um, that I can serve in my church or groups I can join so that I can meet new people and make friends? So that's, that's really the point of a resolution is personal growth. Yeah. 100%. 100%. And so they can have the same goal or they can they can have the same mindset, but they're not always the same thing. Right. I like it. Um, so what about your goals? What are the things you're thinking through this year? What Are they big? Are they specific? Are they overarching? What you got happening? All right. So um, <clears throat> speaking towards like it being not so specific so that you can set your tone, that's kind of the route that I went. Um, this year, I have some specific things that I'll be working towards, but um, the specificity for me is going to come week to week, month to month, rather than a year ahead. Mm. So, um, what I mean by that is when I was taking some time to reflect over the past year and try to think, you know, what I wanted my year 2021 to look like, um, I used a questionnaire. And um, it was just helpful. And the first thing that it did was reflect on the past year. Right. Um, which, of course, we all had a weird year. And, and this is, again, the best time for you to sit back and, and look back on the past year because there might be some things you need to grieve. There might be things you need to um, move along from. Uh, and, again, I won't go on, you know, into all that. I'll, I'll talk about what I did. So reflect on the past year. And then the questionnaire that I used took me through different categories. It took me through, um, let's see if I can remember them all, heart, soul, mind, body. I think that was all of them. And then within those, um, it touched on your personal, professional, relational, um, spiritual. And, and it was a Christian-based questionnaire. So in every question, it, it's, you know, in a biblical aspect, biblical prospect of what you're what you're aiming for. And so I did this questionnaire. And so at the end of it, it was like, where do you, you know, where do you see the theme in the things that you're wanting to, uh, you know, improve or make changes on or focus on? And um, this year I was like, okay, I want a word for my year. (laughs) And so um, just to kind of set the tone. And I didn't want it to be like, just pick a word and go with it. I actually wanted it to have to do with what I was aiming for and the focuses and the things that were coming out of this questionnaire. Um, and the first thing that I thought of was 
flourish. I wanted things to flourish. And there specifically was my prayer life. Um, I want to have a more proactive prayer life. Rather than in response, a responding prayer life, which is would be, um, I pray when you ask me to. I pray when something happens. And I had even gotten in the habit of praying what I read from Scripture, praying about what I read from Scripture. Mm. Um, but what I was lacking is um, a proact- what I'm calling a proactive prayer life, where I'm praying before, any, you know, before it happens or, um, you know, as a first thing. So um, prayer life was one of them. And then I have some things with my own business and my um, nutrition career. And then with my family and relational things that I want to um, flourish. But let me stop there and say flourish was not my word. Because I realized that for any of that to flourish, I was going to have to cultivate it first. And if you know me, you know I like plants. Am I a gardener? Heck no. Do I really know what I'm doing? Absolutely not. But I understand that for plants to grow, you have to take care of them you have to cultivate them. You have to nourish them and care for them and um, be intentional. So water them, <laughs> which is a really hard thing for me to remember to do. But I say all that to say cultivate in the aspects that I just mentioned, prayer, professional, uh, personal, spiritual, relational. Um, cultivate these things. And I have specific things that I'll be working on, but I'm not going to go into all that. Um, is my theme for the year. I like it. So mine technically started back late November, early December. Um, mm. You were already thinking on it. Uh, a little bit technically. Um, so I'm part of a just email group or whatever from a guy named Jeff Henderson. He's over a, a new nonprofit he calls Four, and it's just being um, a for your city, your community, your state, whatever. Um, he comes out of the North Point network of churches. That's Andy Stanley's churches. He's a pastor there. Um, anyway, part of this network. And so he was actually already in the process of helping people think towards their 2021 goals because it's getting to be the end of 2020. He said, here's what we're going to do for the month of December. Everybody's going to take, and in the evening, you're going to write down three things you're that was either a win or something you're thankful for from the day. Uh, you're going to write down one goal for tomorrow, whatever your biggest goal is, and you're going to write down a habit that you want to, let's go with cultivate since you cultivate. used that way that word, a habit you want to make sure you cultivate tomorrow. So we're going to do that through December or at least until you take Christmas holiday, he said, and then we're going to lean back into it again come January. So did that, Was in, I enjoyed it. It was, it was helpful because I don't think reflecting back on my day with a mindset of what was a win or what's a thankful, that's just, that's not my default. I'm not a reflect and let's see what the win was. I'm a push forward to tomorrow kind of guy. I'm already thinking about what I need to be accomplishing two days from now, always and forever. That's just my default. Um, so reflecting was it was good. Um, through that, it kind of got me set up for January. Kind of figured I was going to keep doing that every evening. And so it was the first week of, actually I guess it was the week where... Uh, what, New Year's was a Friday, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I guess it was the week leading into that. We were working from home because we had been exposed and were unsure if we were going to have COVID or not at that point. So working from home, blowing through all the emails that piled up across the week and a half of not checking them. And I saw some other people with some of their ways and tactics and thoughts. And so ultimately brought all this together to make an evening and morning ritual, which is really where um, my New Year's goals lie or my year goals whatever you want to call it i'm using the word rhythm because mm. ritual just feels weird I don't, yeah i don't know that i like that one fully so i'm going with rhythm even though i'm calling it my evening and morning rituals um and so, so tell us what they are so yeah um so my morning one um it's pulling a passage whether that's a single verse word or whole paragraph from whatever my morning reading um bible reading is um, it's trying to find some application from that, so just basic, real easy Bible reading, Bible study on both of those. Um, there's a prayer for the day, 
And then the last one is what's the big goal for the day. So what's my big thing that, if nothing else, I want to accomplish that in the day. So that's my morning. And then in the evening, I'm doing the three wins or thankfuls. I'm doing a God moment. So where's a God moment? Somewhere in the day. Because if I've gone through the day and there wasn't a God moment, it wasn't that God didn't do something. It's that I wasn't paying attention. And that one is stretching the snot out of me. Uh, Because, again, like reflecting on my day is already not a default. And so reflecting on my day, trying to filter it through God moments, is killing me seven days into doing this. Um, It's it's stretching me really hard and in a good way. In a good way, I like it. Um, And then the goal for tomorrow. So I'm doing goal morning and evening. Um, just felt right to have it in both places and it's typically been the same goal but there was one day that as the morning hit I realized what I'd put the previous evening really didn't actually need to be the goal of that day so I did change it a little bit and then it's that habit and as of right now my habit every single time is doing my morning and evening rituals and the whole point of that habit one is because when you write things down, or in my case, I'm typing them, but when you you put something on paper or on digital, whatever you use, um, it's just so much more likely that you're actually going to do those things. Uh, There's literally studies behind it that show when you write down an intention, when you write down a goal, a to-do list, whatever, you're infinitely more likely to accomplish it than if you just think it in your head. I mean, take Bible reading, for instance. I am not a good journaler, and so that's part of what this morning and evening rituals are pushing me in, even just making short sentences. Um, But writing these things down is forcing me to make sure every morning I've done my Bible reading because I can't answer the first two questions on my morning ritual until I've done that. Yeah. Um, So it's kind of forcing me into some of these habits, and I like it. We're seven days in, so, you know, it's still fresh, it's still mm-hmm. new, so call me in, you know, another seven, well, and, and we'll had, see we are. You kind of worked on it some, like you said, before right. now. Right, and that was... That that, was and that's his, why New Year's resolution can work for some people, because it's not just, like, this out-of-the-blue thing. Right, absolutely. And it's already a part, or somewhat a part of your yeah. daily lifestyle. And so, looking for rhythms, and so we actually brought that together in our family. Um, shout out to the Exchange Parents. Yes, and uh, their that post. Instagram page. Yes, absolutely. So there was a post on there. I don't remember all the questions, but it was sitting down as a family and uh, kind of talking through some things you wanted to do for the year, five big things, um, a few things you wanted to learn together as a family, and maybe like one person or family that you wanted to grow to know better mm-hmm. outside of your immediate family. I think those were kind of the yeah, three main areas. Yeah, I might be missing one or two in there. but And part of it was coming up with a, a theme. theme of your year. And so we took our themes and married them together. So his theme is rhythm. My theme is cultivate. So we're cultivating rhythms this year. Yes, cultivate a healthy rhythm. Yes, that's right. We put healthy, healthy We put healthy in there because we wanted to make a point that yeah. we're wanting to do things that are going to um, grow us and, and, and improve and better us, make us, you know, um, you know better, period. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I think it's really cool that we could kind of put ours together um, for the family. And I think just like, you know, I love that everybody does it differently. I was talking to a friend today and her kind of set up on her New Year's resolutions looked a little bit different than mine. And it was just so cool to hear from her and how she did it. And she gave me some ideas. And um, I was like, mm, I, you know, I didn't really think about it like that. So talking with your friends can be a really helpful way and giving you some ideas. But um, I think for us, I think what it boils down to is like we set our tone for like things we're wanting to aim for. But this goalie, this goalie, this daily <laughs> goal or this daily like thing of putting it in front of you is what can be really helpful in you actually living it out. And not only are you putting it in front of yourself, but you're putting it, or we are putting it in front of the Lord because we're making it a part of our biblical and prayer life. Mm-hmm. Um, I know for me personally, like I'm writing, I'm, yep. I'm taking pen to paper, Tyler's typing. Um, All right. Yeah, and so I'm using it within my scripture reading, my notes, and then my actual, since I'm cultivating a, a new, a better prayer life in my prayer, my prayer journal. So, 
shout out to Val Marie Paper. If you need a good prayer journal, Val Marie Paper is the way to go. It's so legit that you have to watch a two-hour webinar yes. to fully know how to use the prayer journal. And if you just really need more help with prayer, they have a nine-session um, class on uh, prayer. And so I haven't jumped into that. But, yeah, I mean, that's how legit it is. It's really cool. So shout-out to Val Marie Paper's company, paper company. Not a Dunder Mifflin paper company, but... <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of, I know you were all very concerned about The Office le- leaving Netflix. Very it concerned. was on a uh, iTunes sale through like January thirty dollars for all seasons. So we definitely bought that just in case we need to watch it at any given moment. Yeah, yeah, and that's the thing. It's just in case we need it. Oh, gosh. And we had a gift card, and we budgeted it somewhat so don't yes. worry like it wasn't just like an impulse buy we re- <laughs> we really thought about it and then yes. i saw somebody post on facebook that it was on itunes for 30 dollars, and i i literally was like about to call a client <laughs> and i put that client call on hold to go tell tyler go get yes. it it's on itunes for 30 dollars. we did we made a wise choice in waiting for it because we, we did. did have it at a higher price to buy all the seasons and we debated it for a minute and turned it down until that better price <laughs> came out. Oh yeah. So and, and and if you're wondering about Lost, we pa- we put Lost on pause because we wanted to get some office in before the it left Netflix and now we don't have to worry about that and now that we are cultivating healthy rhythms, honestly, we just We haven't sat down We and haven't sat TV down together. and watched TV together and we've been in quarantine, so um yeah, you find that things. there's other things to do sometimes than watch TV. Which is weird for my life. <laughs> right. So weird. Well, hey, let's take a quick break, and then we're going to hop back in with you guys. All right, guys. So we just want to wrap up by reminding of you of a few things and maybe telling you some um, new things that are happening. So don't forget, we are currently in the middle of a series. It's God's Big Picture, Tracing the Storyline of uh, the Bible. Yep. And it's a book written by Vaughn Roberts, but we just wanted to break it down and basically just bring the gospel in a simplified form. And I say simplified knowing that we just did like a ton of podcast episodes and now it doesn't feel simplified anymore. <laughs> and we still have several to go. And we still have several to go. But it's been so much fun. It has been fun. So if you just want to learn something or just want to hear a little bit about the Bible and how it is one story that points to Jesus, go back and listen to the previous episodes. Just go ahead and listen to all of them all the way back to episode one if you missed like them. It's 13 or 14 anyway. Yeah, I mean, it's not that many. So um, you can catch up and then you can kind of follow along. This is just like a little bonus episode here while we were taking a break for the holidays and now quarantine. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, anyway, so God's Big Picture, Tyson's Storyline, and the Bible, um, and seeing how it all comes together. Uh, so, that's, what's we're, that's what we got going on right now. So, continue to listen. But if you haven't listened to the other ones, other ones go back. Yeah, definitely go back and listen to those as well. Um, In order. Yes, we are looking to launch our YouTube channel. We video record all of these in the process of audio recording them. So we're going to drop those on YouTube. We've gotten a new fancy mic now, and so we felt like it was finally the right moment. We might backdate the other ones. We might not. We'll see. Yeah, Um, we were usually just like laying in the bed um, recording the or like sitting on the bed recording these. Yeah. So don't expect anything fancy. Yeah, definitely not. Um, I have a scarf over my pajama shirt in yeah, this video. Do. so and I'm cool with that, 100%. Yeah, so we're going to drop that. We'll give you more details on the next episode <laughs> about it. But before we get to the wrapping up portion, I would like to know, Virginia, what is messy in your life that you're loving? All right. I actually have an answer this time. <laughs> um. And it's not going to be, the answer is not going to be the mess that is on the other side of the microphone that Ooh, you yes, cannot see. Yes, we are see. not turning that camera around. Um, yeah, because we're trying to get Christmas down, but then we got quarantined and booyah. Yeah, we're stuck in our house, thus we quit doing things in our house. Well, Go figure because that out. here's the messy part that I'm learning to love. Yeah. <laughs> We got Luna home with us, right? She's uh, 16 months old. So cute. Adorable. The best. Yeah. And um, she normally is in daycare. So I work at home. And while it is technically a part-time job, it is a full-time like thing that I'm doing. So 
I'm working at home. Tyler's normally working at the building. And Luna's normally at daycare. Well, we are all together. And I love being all together. But it's really hard to be all together when you still have a job to do. Oh, goodness, isn't it? So it's been really difficult, and I'm not complaining here. I've talked to some of my friends, and I'm like, I, I need your help and your prayers, please. <laughs> but um, I think just the first week was fine. It was like we were just like, oh, we're all together. It's it's after Christmas. Uh, let's slide on into New Year's. Um, oh, okay, we gotta keep we gotta keep home. We gotta stay home another week. Okay, so this week is where it got tough, got messy, and um, was struggling a little bit. But I say that to say, um, if if I didn't have my heart rooted in Christ <laughs> and uh, you know deli- being delivered support from the Lord, and if I didn't have a strong marriage with my husband, <laughs> it's been tested. Then it would be really bad. So I just want to say <laughs> it's been messy, it's been hard, but um, having this rhythm. That we've developed, and I'd already, I mean, I'd already had some uh, a rhythm of, you know, reading my scriptures and so on and so forth, but um, I think it's been really helpful in just keeping me um, positive, keeping me gracious to myself and to my family, and um, Tyler has been a rock and solid, and our marriage is stronger for it. Yes. All right. Messy in my life that I'm loving. I, 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 debating between two of them. I'm going to lean into this one. Um, So I am super not all that keen on waking up early. Um, It's just not my go-to. I'm a night owl. Um, I like to stay up till 2 o'clock in the morning. That's not difficult to do. No, I'm like a 9 p.m. to 9 a.m. person. You are. It's it's lovely. You like you like that sleep. <laughs> yes, I'm um, sloth. I, I don't need it unless you want to take it from me early in the morning. Like after I've gone to sleep at 2 a.m. and you want me to get back up at 6? No. Or even if I went to bed at 9 o'clock, if you want me to get back up at 6, it's just it's not a good time. I yeah. like 7 and after is my my world seven and after seven thirty really feels right to me that's where i live um but because i've added this uh morning ritual to my life and i'm trying to be much more diligent in actually reading my bible in the first thing i do in the day and not somewhere in the day um we are getting up by 6 20 it should be 6 a.m right you know it takes a minute yeah it takes a minute so Yes, I am. I'm loving it as much as I nodded for just a minute this morning. Won't, won't lie. It, it kind of hit me a little bit. Yeah. But then I shook Everyone. it off. I watched a quick uh, Bible Project video to kind of wake me back up a little bit. And then I trucked back on to finish up my reading and my morning ritual. Yeah, and Tyler um, doesn't drink coffee. so I don't. I don't, don't drink coffee. Don't suggest that. He doesn't drink coffee. I don't like the taste of it. And you're like, oh, as you get older. Some people, apparently, that's your thing as you got older. I just, it's something about I've always it. liked coffee. There's a taste in my mouth, and then it stays in my mouth. Like, hours later? No. Well, that's why you need to brush your teeth. I'm sorry. I, I'm I do brush my teeth. Well, I'm the... just saying, like, if that's what's going on, you need to brush your teeth. Well, I just don't drink coffee because it's gross. Anyways, you don't drink coffee, but you're waking up early and you're loving it. I am. I love it. So thanks for joining us today and hearing the things that are messy in our life. Thanks for hopping in and hearing about some New Year's goals. Hey, it's not the New Year technically anymore, but but you can still set a theme to the rest of 2021. Um, You can just set a theme to the rest of January 2021, Mm -hmm. or if you're listening to this in 2025 and it's December, set a theme for your December, whatever. Um... Set a theme because it helps you grow. Set a goal because when you're intentional, you start to walk in the path that you meant to go and didn't just stumble down some random path. Yeah, I think it's just that balance between being completely mindless and going through the motions and actually being intentional and caring about where you're going and what you're doing. Yeah, so thanks for listening. Um, Let us know what your New Year's intentions resolutions goals or tones are for the year and um we'd love to hear from you on uh either social media or bowls of life um dot fm no No. anchor dot fm slash bowls of life we do have a bowls of life.com 
Um, uh, yeah, you can also hit us up on there. You can subscribe to us in all the places. Yes. Um, you can share this with your friends through all the interweb things and also in the, you know, human communication type things. Right. Um, you can rate us and you can review us. If you um, haven't done that and you're our friends... Come on now. Are that's, you good friends? Are you that just would like be a, okay just friends? Just like a nice thing for you to do for us, please. Yeah. Make our 2021 cultivate good rhythms of lots of reviews. Um, did that work? Did I, did I phrase it together? Sure. Okay, cool. And then really the last thing we would love to do, we would love to have you guys on our podcast with us. So head to that anchor.fm slash bowls of life. I got it right that time. Mm-hmm. And tell us what is messy in your life that you're loving. Thanks for joining us on this podcasting journey. We'll see you again soon. Hey to the man.